very lively little boy. Very lively and very lovable. Very loving boy, you know. Even to us, he was a very, of course, the only boy in the family. And so um, his parents and sisters adored him. And we too love him a lot. I believe that basically he was, he was a sincere man. But I must admit, I did not share his ideological position. His level of honesty is one of the things that have won me over to him, to have had such deep relation with him. He helped us to, to walk with a, set of, a sense of dignity, a sense of pride, a sense of devotion. He got you to see your country, what it really was, what it meant to you in a lot of areas. And I think this is where he scored. So when, they, when Bishop was killed on October 19th, to me, the entire country wept, and also the world, because they did not kill a Grenadian, but they killed a world leader. Oh, no, they shouldn't kill Bishop, so. Oh, no, they shouldn't kill Bishop, so. He was a righteous man. He was a loving man. He was a true man. He was a righteous oh, man. No, they shouldn't kill Bishop, so. Oh, oh no, no, they shouldn't kill Bishop, so. Well, my name is Alomenta Bishop, the mother. Well, <laughs> I must I say three children. It's only two now, eh? What should I say? Yeah. Three children. the mother of Maurice Bishop, who was killed on the 19th of October last year. Well, essentially, the events of October 19th were the end product of a silent conspiracy, which characterized the Bernard Court fraction of the party. I would say that what happened in October had two basic reasons for ad, ad underlying them. The very first reason is the personal ambition of Bernard Cord. The second element was an element of ultra-leftism. They used the question of ideology as the excuse for trying to gain power, but I don't think that the, que the whole question of ideology is in fact the the, the important factor here. It was simply a man who was very interested in becoming prime minister of running this country. It is something that we knew in the party over the years, but that I think most of us felt that we could have controlled. And nobody for one second ever imagined that he would have reached the stage of mass murder and violence of the brutal kind of October 19th to try to achieve that personal ambition. When the party, the membership of the party, demanded disciplinary action to be taken against Bernard Court because of his attempts to rein in the party, to control the party, to effectively run the party, um, people demanded some kind of disciplinary action. And what really happened is that Morris came out there and defended him, saying that unity was important, that we must settle our problems internally, and that we only we can move forward is by not creating confusion within the party. The code clique, counter-revolution as we call it, because it was a counter-revolution by the code clique, which completely co destroyed the revolution. And after those events, as you, as you now know, the revolution collapsed and the United States invaded and are still occupying our country. What happened that day is that the people of Grenada, over 30,000 of them, hearing that Maurice Bishop was under house arrest for well over five days, decided to march on to Maurice Bishop's home, his official residence, where he was held under house arrest, and released him. The day before, the St. George's started demonstrating. Guav, Guav and Sotez and so, the schools up there started demonstration before. Then the schools in St. George's heard about it. Then we start demonstrating the other day in, in our school itself. How did that happen? 
Well, we start jumping and making little beats with different words in it, like saying, no bishop, no school, right? And then the principal, that's Mr. Batiste, he could not have controlled us. So he just left us and we all flood, flood the street. You have people in the streets like having one poem, like a river, you know, just flowing onto Bishop resident to release him from how serious. This show the love the people had, that they weren't going to accept that the Prime Minister, the beloved Prime Minister, were placed under house arrest by a few, what I term, ultra leftist men who is drunk and theory now, book knowledge, rather than the, the you know, the practical thing that they, they see out there. Look at the, the masses, the same masses you talk about, look at the masses out there. But what respect do you show to the masses who is showing love for the leader? Well, it was about 99% of the population up there. They fired shots in the air. Some of the people ran, but most of them stayed. Then it had armored cars in front of the gate. They could not have controlled the whole population, so they just had to leave the gate open. They just pushed down the gate. It, have, um, it had people get damaged, school children, you know, from the massive crowd. Their legs got broken and so on. Well, they went in and took him out. Yes, he was only in a short pants, half naked in a short pants. And then when he came out of the house, some, a few people take off the shirt to give him to cover up his body. People start shouting, we get to leader. That's we leader, we get to leader. And then we make for the fort. He wanted to go on to the fort because of some telephone calls which he wanted to make because there was a lot of propaganda going on which suggested that Cuba was supporting that other clique who were trying to oust Morris Bishop. And that was, of course, totally untrue. And Morris Bishop wanted to clear Cuba's name. He wanted to establish the facts correctly. He could not have said anything. They had to put, just put him in a car and bring him to the foot and to get him to speak speak in the market, but he didn't have time to do that because they took over control on the fort when about three armored cars came up on the fort and they just started shooting off at the people. And I stood on market till. I left there a few minutes before that happened and I stood on market till and just look at fire blazing and people just falling down. Yeah. It was real terrible. You didn't want to take part? No, because, Why? well, you see, really, if I go to shoot at the masses, then sometimes when I pull my trigger, is my mother, I'll be shooting my grandmother, because my grandmother was in the, um, in the um, demonstration, right? And my, I, have, I have seven other brothers besides me, and I have one sister. So besides, I go in and just pull a trigger, they, sometimes them seven I could be shooting, and when I don't shoot my mother, I shoot my father. How, how, that, that mean I just have, I just didn't know in the world. I can't blame nobody for that, it's me, myself, I don't blame it. Yeah, so, I couldn't really pull out trigger the masses. Morris never expected the guns to be turned against the masses. Because as eyewitnesses have said, when the armored cars arrived in the fort and they opened fire on the people, Morris's words were, oh my God, they have turned guns in the masses. <laughs> I think at that time he felt totally and completely betrayed because he was a person who needed to have a spirit of camaraderie around and that he got on with everybody. He could not, he was not a petty man, malicious, spiteful, conspiratorial or anything like that. He was a whole person. In fact, his greatest strength perhaps was his greatest weakness because he made no enemies. And um, in that sort of atmosphere, um, deviousness and treachery, I think, m must have overcome him at that time. They were placed against a wall at Fort Rupert and mowed down.
What I should say, maybe, maybe they were too good. They just took, you know, licks. They never hit anyone. They loved the people. They gave all that they had for the people of Grenada. And without any reason, they were killed. We are yet to find out why. It's a sad situation from the years, the political years of Grenada that I could recall. I would honestly say what Morris has done in four and a half years was never done by any other government. Whether they remain there 10, 20, or 25 years. Morris Bishop was one who quite honestly changed my lifestyle over the last few years. Because I saw for the first time in Morris Bishop a Grenadian who was prepared to try to bring all forces together, regardless of the political views, regardless of the strata, to try to take a nationalistic approach in developing Grenada, and most important, to improve the quality of life for the majority of Grenadians. Last night, Mr. Reagan called congressional leaders to the White House to say he had approved the action. This afternoon, Secretary of State Schultz emphasized the U.S. will not be an occupying force. We will leave uh, promptly. We have no intention of staying there. And the government that will be produced by the people of Grenada is entirely up to them as far as we're concerned. But in fact, the U.S. has a deep interest in Grenada's government. In the morning of the invasion, I stayed up at my brother's veranda and looked at the helicopters and everything going down. And then the next morning, people came up to me and said, oh, you, all your buildings on the ground, everything flat. But this one they thought was standing. It was standing, looking at it from the road. They thought it was all right. They say, oh, the one you live in is all right. But my dear, when I came down, it was a different story. Every glass in the house was smashed. The whole room was smashed up. They bombed then the house. They bombed the house, yeah. On two occasions, we closed up the house, and each time they broke it open. So we refused to close it again. And the Americans came in here, in the house? Yes, we did. Looking do. for who, for what? For guns, they said, in the roof. And then they got a man to show them the land. Who were they uh, looking for in the land? Cubans, they said. If we do not act promptly and decisively in defense of freedom, new Cubas will arise from the ruins of today's conflicts. Let our friends and our adversaries understand that we will do whatever is prudent and necessary to ensure the peace and security of the Caribbean area. They help the people a lot because, um, for instance, the international airport, they really work hard on the international airport, eh? Yeah, both day and night. Then, um, when, when dry season and thing and water, um, no water and thing, they, they, they use a chalk, the water chalk, right? To draw water and distribute to the people in, the, in, the, in different communities, right? Like if, um, you might, you might be working on the international airport and you're building a house, they come and help you. Yeah. There's competence any I've met anywhere, and a lot more than some. I think any construction engineer will tell you when they look at what's been done here, if you if you looked at photographs of this area before they started and look at where they've got to now in that time, using the plant type of plant and machinery that they were using, because it was pretty outdated, they've done exceptionally well. I think any construction engineer, if he was honest, would, would agree with that. There was a lot of talk about the airport being a naval base. 
and everybody was free to go to visit the naval base. Now it seems as though it's an international airport and people cannot go down there. You have to get past to go. I'm not afraid to say this because it really hurts me. The area I live, I can see the planes taking off and landing on that airport. And it really hurts me to know the people who really sacrificed and went through to get that airport started are not here to see the finishing up of it. I still feel as though I'm living in a sort of nightmare, but when I wake up, the nightmare is still there, you know? I still, sometimes I see his car on the road and I still find myself looking in for him and that sort of thing, you know? But I know he's really dead, but it's even harder to face up because, you know, we weren't able to bury him, so there's no grave or anything that you can say, or you can put some flowers. Right. Or anything. So I think that makes it even harder to really believe that it's happened, you know. It is amazing, really, when people in the United States today are doing everything possible to try to find out what happened to their relatives in Vietnam a decade ago, that we in Grenada suffer the same fate of a yearning of the people of our country to find out exactly what fate befell a favorite son and favorite sons and daughters, as well as the ordinary people of our country who were butchered with Bishop on the day that he was executed. Every day that passes, the sentiment and the courage of the people get stronger. And so any day they hand it over, the level of mass response will be even greater than it would have been in the, in the traumatic period of November and December. The United States has the information, but of course it, is be, it will be very um, damaging to them because I will tell you with certainty that if the remains, whatever they are, are handed over tomorrow and an announcement is made to that effect on the radio, there would be thousands and thousands of people who would come out to pay their last respects. And this would be very embarrassing to the United States government because in all their propaganda, they claim that Bishop was um, uh, a dictator um, cast in the mold of a cooperator and conspirator in the Cuban-Soviet um, axis. Well, my, my name is Nicholas Braffitt peculiar pronunciation, really, because it all depends on which part of the West Indies you are. It is spelled B-R-A-T-H-W-A-I-T-E, which would pronounce more like Brathwaite. But particularly in Barbados and Grenada, it is pronounced Braffitt. I am at present chairman of the Advisory Council of Grenada, which is the interim government, which was set up on 15th November 1983, after the disastrous events of October 19th, followed by the intervention. Even some of the occupying troops are causing a certain amount of um, terror to the population. Such as? They're beating people. Um, shootings, they've shot a few people. Um, they've invaded their homes without warrants. Some of them like us. Yeah. Some, you know, don't. So what do they say? Say it again. What do they say to you? The CPF, go back home. We oh, don't need home. you, yeah. We don't need you down here again. Go back home. What do you feel like? <laughs> yeah, I feel really funny about it, you know. Very funny about it. We don't have occupation forces. We have some... Caribbean. We have, yeah, we have a Caribbean uh, uh, security force, which is very necessary, and we have some American MPs, which are also extremely necessary.
I think it is true to say that the health services now are of a higher standard than they were when we took over. Because we had an arrangement with Project Hope, funded by USAID. All the doctors have been expelled by the Americans and sent back to Cuba. And we don't have any specialists now. The same is true of dentists. We only have one dentist now, as opposed to eight or nine dentists. Uh, some other medical experts from Western European countries expelled. Um, you know, and what has happened now is a total cycle of dependence upon the largest of the United States, which has to, to date not been forthcoming. I did say that we just wanted to get aid to help us to begin to develop. And the main purpose which we want this aid to serve at this particular time is to assist us in creating jobs. There is a problem of unemployment. There is a high level of unemployment. And I'm looking forward, at least in the future, uh, for, you know, some uh, leader of this country to, to rather um, take an uh, example from Morris, you know, at least take, try and uh, continue the work that Morris had left behind, you know, like uh, the, develop the roads and build different industries. They have the nectar, you have the flour mill, but you need to, you know, improve on it, get it bigger, you know, and finish the airport and finish your, your, your free education and free education and uh, free medical care is something that Maurice Bishop implemented in this country and it will be very detrimental to the people if whoever party wins the election this year takes away that type of gainings to the people. Apart from the fact that we talk about the material thing, I think one of the things that we must stress is that the revolution did help people as individuals to understand themselves better and to grow as individuals. And I think this is one of the things that it has done for women. Women were able to see themselves not as just um, male dominated and male substitutes, but as people who had a contribution to make. Morris Bishop teach the people what is democracy, what is uh, all different types of politics, you know? And so the Grenadian people are conscious of the way of life, and, and they are think, they, they feel, right, that, that the, the, the rightest way of living, the most uh, genuine way, the most, uh, the best way in order to develop is uh, to, to go Morris Bishop way, because it, it, it is the right way when you look at the way of life. At least you had, you had, freedom on the on the street and things like that and uh, you teach freedom. yeah yeah you teach people with free education he, well he teach you all about uh, uh, economics all about uh, politics all about the history around you you know everything like that you know he didn't die a millionaire far from it he died very simply he has left though millions of friends democratic people people who admired this young, outstanding, third world leader who dared address the agenda of our time and to confront the most powerful enemy, the most powerful country in the world, to look them in the eye, to say that, yes, we are poor, but we are not for sale. Yes, we are poor, but we are not afraid. We will continue to struggle. A man who didn't compromise himself for sheer convenience. Who said that the freedom of our people is the most essential element and quality that people need to have if they are to live with honor. It is better to die than to live with dishonor. And he paid that price. Our people don't know this because the invading forces suppressed every piece of information that they could. But we will continue the struggle that he begun. And though we might die, we will continue. The Grenadian people really loved Bishop because he was of an upper class and was friend, was friend of everybody. He, he lived in a really nice way to the people. And when he died, on the, when he was shoot, shot on the fort, the people just keep on crying and 
about a whole two days, they just keep on talking about it. Even months past, they're still really talking about it all now. Yeah, really crying. And so it was really hard to face. And in your life? Huh? In your life, how will you remember him? Well, I always, you know, the way how I saw the, the, um, the, this amount of people just demonstrating for him, and I was one of them. Well, I really will remember that. Mm -hmm. How old are you? I'm 17. Bishop is really nice to the people, as a matter of fact. Our duty is to continue the struggle against imperialism. Our duty is to continue to build our Grenada Revolution and ensure that we, as one Grenada people, small as we are, will forge that wider, meaningful link and will ensure the unity of our people. Long live the Grenada Revolution. All power and glory to our people, forever.